Hi everyone, now I'm going to be tying the Red Fox Squirrel Hair Nymph it's called. This is a Dave Whitlock fly, it's a very famous nymph, tied by a very famous uh, fly tyre and fly fisher author in America and a uh, very well respected gentleman uh, known around the world for a, a lot of flies and basically has been part of the, the world of fly fishing, fly tying, and uh, this is a is probably one of his best known flies. Now, it's very simple to tie. Now, I'm going to try and stick as close to the original. Now, I'll put a photograph up of one from his website. You can probably see the actual fly. So I'm going to tie the same as that. I'm just going to stick to this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weight the fly. Now. This is just copper wire, which is the length of copper wire that I've got. And all I'm going to do here is build a wee thorax using the copper wire as weight. It just adds a wee bit of control of the, the nymph uh, when it comes to if you want to get a wee bit deeper. Right, take away the waist there. So basically I'm just using up the length here just to build up this thorax area. And it helps get the taper in the, in, in the nymph itself. You can use any wire, uh, you don't have to use copper wire. It's going to be covered up, so it's just there as weight. So I'm happy with that. So bend and break away the wire. If it will break anyway, there we are. Now I'm going to be using uh, this thread here. I'm going to use the, this is basically a rusty brown. It's a very orangey colour, it's a fiery brown really. Uh, it's a nice colour. Now I'm going to, I've waxed the thread. So I'm going to start at the eye, and then I'm going to control the turns by keeping the thread waist piece tight so that I can cover the copper wire. Come on to the shank. So we've got our, our weight starting to get our shape. Now the, the tail of the, of the nymph is from the fox squirrel, this here. I mean, all flies tied with the fox squirrel, the American fox squirrel, so this is, it gets its name from it. You've got the orangey side, here on the side. You've got the, the hair for the tail, as well as for the, uh, the thorax, so it's all there for you. You can buy the mix. I've actually got the, the packet of mix that you can buy in, in, in Dave's name from SLF. So I'm going to use that in the body, because it's already blended for us. So, uh, but you can actually buy the, the squirrel dub as well in a packet. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to, if you look at the dressing, there's a wee touch right at the very side, a wee touch of that nice sort of warm orange if you want to call it, it's a nice colour, in the actual tail, so I'm going to basically bring it out, hold it, and cut it as close to the skin as I can to get the tail. Just looking at the tail I have. The length is reasonably long, it's not that short, so I'm going to do it round about just less than the, uh, sorry, slightly longer than the body, but less than the full length of the shank, so I'll tie it in and see how it's going to sit. So I'll just catch it on the top. That's very tail-like to me, and I'm happy with that. Just make sure it's tied in. Now, the rib of the fly, I'm using a small gold tinsel. So I'm going to catch this on the side. I'm just basically going to tie in these waist ends of the tail and come back down to see how it's sitting. That's fine. So we've got the dubbing from SLF. This is a blend for the body. Sold as the abdomen. Just lightly dub it on. It's really easy to dub. Slide it up. Then we can tighten, slacken off whenever we want. Take this all the way, most of the way up, so not most of the way, sorry, up the body length, which is about two thirds. See a nice taper there. Then we rub the, the body. Catch this in. Make sure it's caught. I'm just going to trim it away. Make sure it's secure. Now I've got some of the, I mean, if you want to use the actual body, it's just a matter of 
pulling it off, blend it within your fingers. It's quite easy to blend, you just mix it. Apply it to your thread. Then we just can tighten up when we need, so I guess we just basically anchor the, the dubbing to the, the hook by doing a, a turn and then we can tighten to that and you can get a nice thorax, we just apply it to suit. Should be fine. This last turn here I'm just going to come back a wee bit and then draw it back with my fingers just to basically make a wee bit a wee bit more life in it, it just gives it like a, a hair like hackle if you want to call it, it just blends into the dressing. Let's pick hair out. And then I've got, I've actually, I've got a partridge hackle. Now I've taken away most, I've actually used it in another fly so when I'm tying this fly I pull off the bottom fibres and I use them on another nymph but I keep the tips for just the wee short hackles because it's a full, it's a wound hackle that's on this fly so I'm going to do that I'm going to catch the tip of the feather with my hackle pliers just pull it into where I want to catch it so trim away but leave enough so you can catch it in Get a wee bit of wax on your thread. Two or three turns. I'm looking at, I don't want too much. To, uh, just an, enough for a turn or so, I can take away some of these. A wee bit long. Sometimes I've got, I do that once I tie it in, and the main reason I do it, it's not recommended like, but is that I can see the length when it's tied on, I can get a, an idea. So. And I'm only looking, you're only going to get a turn or so. And that's all you need. It's just over the turn, and then we can catch this in. We can build up the head with the thread. And basically that's what you see, that's the dressing. Break off the remains of the hack open. I've put some dubbing at times in front, but you... You can do what you like, but this is, I'm going to stick to the original dressing. Well, anyway, what should I feel is the original dressing, so. And don't be shy with the head, it's part of the fly. And then trim away your thread. And there we are. We quick look, it's fine, and then it's just a matter of varnishing. There's one wee fine hair there, I can just see it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, before I varnish, I'm going to try and remove that because it's a guarantee. You see, it's under there, it's so fine, I can see it in the, my monitor, but I can't see it really. I think I know it's there. Oh, there it's there. So I'm just using a pair of tweezers. Someone asked me where I got these, they were my daughter's. Kind of pinky, but the, these are a roll pair. Just check. I mean, if you varnish it, the and the hair gets, you can see or see it. I mean, maybe it's probably still there. I can, I think I can see something. Uh, but anyway, well, what happens if you? Because that'll be fine here, it'll probably blob onto it a wee bit, but then what you do is just allow your varnish to dry and then you'll be a, you'll have a better chance of actually removing it once it's dry. If you want, I don't, the fish will not mind. I'm just being fussy. You can see it there, one wee hair. There's always one. But anyway, there we go. Lovely wee nymph. Great fly, and uh, and that's basically going by 
why on the internet exactly as it should be tied. I've got one here just to give you an idea. This is out my box uh, where I've just used the, the fine squirrel either side. It's in a different hook, uh, it's slightly heavier, but you can use whatever hook you like. But this is just another version. Uh, it's, as I say, it's just got a wee bit of dubbing in front, so you can mess about. But the original dressing is, is like this. So a great fly, uh, certainly worth tying, having a few in your box. So I hope you enjoyed that, and again, thanks for watching, and until next time.